20 years ago tomorrow, 19 men hijacked four commercial airliners in the United States. They turned those planes into weapons, crashing them into the World Trade Center in New York City, the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and after passengers on United Airlines Flight 93 fought back into a field outside Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The attacks, orchestrated by al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden, killed 2,977 people. And it altered the course of history. In response, U.S. President George W. Bush launched the War on Terror. American, Canadian and other NATO allies invaded Afghanistan, displacing the Taliban and hunting down members of al-Qaeda. It marked the beginning of America's longest war. That war just came to a close. American and allied troops now gone from Afghanistan, the Taliban back in power. Jean Chrétien was Canada's Prime Minister on 9-11. He is in Lac des Piles, Quebec. Uh, Monsieur Chrétien, very good to have you on the program, and I want to take you back 20 years ago. Can you tell me what you remember about how you heard and what then happened? But as you know, I was. it was on a Monday morning, and I was having a meeting with... Uh, the premier culvert of, of uh, Saskatchewan, and that uh, it was uh, the day after my uh, wedding anniversary. And uh, so he was supposed to see me on the Sunday. He came in the morning because of that. And we're after breakfast, uh, or, you know, we, my assistant Bruce Hartley, I, I think I was with Goldenberg, and Hartley came and he told me that there was something big on TV and I should go there. And so we terminated the meeting and I saw uh, the, the plane had hit, uh, the first plane had hit, and very quickly the second plane came. And uh, so we were right in the middle of a very important uh, moment. and. Uh, the telephone, uh, you know, we, I don't know exactly what I did, but we had some quick decision. The Minister of Transport, uh, David Cullinett, uh, had been informed, and the clerk of the Privy Council had been informed that uh, the plane were over the ocean and they were ordered to uh, not to land in the United States. And we had to decide that on the recommendation of Mr. Cullinett, uh, you know, we gave the permission uh, to the Americans to land in Gander, and it was a very, very important moment for Canada and for, uh, you know, for the population of uh, Gander and other places. But it was it was not only Gander. We did a fantastic uh, service to the American people. I was in communication uh, with. Uh, uh, you know, I think that I called the ambassador from the United States who was uh, not in Ottawa. I did not call right away the president because I knew that he was probably very, he was very busy. And I remember I called our ambassador because uh, we saw on TV that there was an attack on Washington and the Pentagon had been attacked. So we had a lot of people in the embassy not far. From there, so I talk uh, with Ambassador Kurgan and I ask him about the health of our employees, and he said they were all safe. And uh, we discussed the situation. And uh, after that, I, we had to decide to meet with the, the press in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember that the security people wanted me and my wife to quit 24 Sussex. I said, I'm I'm not quitting, and my wife refused to go to Arrington Lake because she wanted to stay with me. And we had to do the routine of uh, consultations, and, uh, you know, I met with the press, inviting the people to stay calm and to talk about the tragedy for the Americans and our friends, the Canadians, were to be with them. And I think I went to give some blood, too, that was... Uh, request to give some blood, uh, so I went uh, quietly to give some blood for the Red Cross, and, uh, and uh, you know, it was a very traumatic period, a difficult day, but uh, 
uh, you know, it was, uh, I remember saying to the Ambassador Kurgan, the world would not be the same anymore. And in fact, it was a very traumatic moment in the, in the Western world and around the globe too. It, it, I mean, it would, of course, be um, the beginnings of uh, the U.S. war on terror in which Canada became involved. But it had many reverberations, um, especially to Muslim Canadians, Muslim Americans. And uh, there was a speech that you gave just six days after 9-11. I want to just play a portion of that speech for us to listen to, Mr. Ketchin. I have been saddened by the fact that the terror of last Tuesday has provoked demonstrations against Muslim Canadians or and other minority groups in Canada. This is completely unacceptable. The terrorists win when they export their hatred. It was what would become a very prescient quote a uh, very prescient message when you look at what would then happen in terms of Islamophobia in the two decades since. I wonder what your reflections are listening back to yourself knowing the kinds of things that would happen globally in the United States and in Canada, what, what your thoughts are. But first, you know, I had to make another t decision that I did not mention. Mm. You know, it was decided that uh, there was to be a ceremony in every of the capital of the the countries to you know to pray for uh, the victims of uh, of New York and we decided in Canada you know the RCMP and the security people didn't want to do that but I invited the Canadian people to come on the hill and there was the 100,000 people came on the Friday to pay respect and show our solidarity with the Americans. What was very striking on CNN that day, like most of the countries in the world, in Washington, they had a service in a cathedral and surrounded by armed forces. But in Canada, the other half of the image on CNN was the 100,000 Canadian mm -hmm. in silence on the hill. You know, there was very little speech, and uh, and uh, I had asked uh, to have three minutes of silence, and it's probably the most dramatic three minutes I've encountered in public because I, the respect and the silence and the emotion was very big on the hill at that moment. And later on, when I saw that we had done it, and it had been uh, the we had been the only one who did not go in hiding uh, that day was uh, you know a great testimony to the way that we are as Canadian mm -hmm. and uh, you know for me it was the beginning of a new era you know the, the, you know since that time this incident has changed transportation you know since that time, every country spent billions of dollars, you know, to, for the security in the airports and so on. The way of things have changed for a lot of, of, uh, of changes in the way we handle some situations since that day. And, uh, you know, the question of trust between the different group in society is extremely important. And on that score, I've always been very proud that here in Canada, you know, we have uh, the most diversified country that exists around the world, if not one of the most, if not the, we have people from all the continents and we live in relatively good peace between us. We don't have uh, tough ghettos like you see in many, many big cities around the globe. And, uh, you know, we... I think we're doing better, but we should not be complacent because I can see sign at this moment of losing some of this uh, trust that existed uh, in Canada when I was there and others. Can, can I just pick up on you, uh, Mr. Kretschmer, and ask, uh, because you were Prime Minister on 9-11, you were also the Prime Minister who first ordered troops into Afghanistan. And uh, Canada's commitment to Afghanistan, of course, ended seven years ago. and. You will have seen, as will everybody watching, 
the chaotic uh, and deadly end to that war. It was primarily the Americans at that point. But I, I, you know, I wonder what your reflections are now on that exit and what the mission was about. You know, are there things that, in <coughs> retrospect, have, have you know, changed? You know, when the Americans. When the Americans were attacked on September the 11th, you know, it was considered as an attack against the Americans. Mm. And because of Clause 5 of the treaty, the NATO treaty, we have an obligation, if one of our, of uh, the members of NATO is attacked to come, to come to their support and defense. And when NATO asked the country, a member of NATO, to go and participate to, you know, to go to to where the problem had started in Afghanistan, you know, we went collectively together there. Of course, the decision to stay there for 22 years, it's a, it was a policy uh, It was, you know, nobody knew how long it would last. You know, we went there and, and uh, when you start to a situation like that, you know when it's come, starting, you don't know when it will be closed. And it was due to the requirement and obligation and solidarity of NATO that Canada went to Afghanistan. And it was our obligation. And when we have obligation, we have to respect that. Mm. When you look at the way in which all of this ended, um, with so many Afghans who had relied on the West, who, who, who grew up in a society under which they had certain freedoms that are likely now to disappear under the Taliban, do you reflect on what the purpose of the war was? And I, you know, I ask you, sir, just in the context of, I, I think about the visits that I made to Afghanistan. But it was a question of, yeah, go I ahead. told you, it was a, at that time a question of security. Nobody mm -hmm. knew exactly who were these people, why the attack had been conducted, mm -hmm. who was the responsible. It took time. So when you face a crisis like that, you make a decision. And it was the collective decision of NATO that the Americans had been attacked and under Clause 5 of the NATO Treaty, we had to go with them. And we did. And I hear you on so why... I could not predict all the consequences that would come 20, to, to 20 years uh, since that started. Mm -hmm. And the decision should have been made a long time ago to quit, uh, but uh, the American decided to stay. And... According to the obligation, we played a role in staying according to the obligation we are taking the day of the, the few days after the attack. What's one single thing that you remember from that day? Is there one moment that really sticks in your mind? Oh, it's when I move uh, to watch a TV and I very quickly, I saw the second plane arriving. You know, I thought it was, it was unbelievable. And, uh, you know, I said it's something big. I, I didn't know what was to be the consequences. Everybody was afraid that it was probably broader, broader than that. You know, my sec security people for the, the government of Canada were preoccupied about uh, the attack against us. They wanted me to move out of 24 Sussex. Uh, and I felt that I had to stay uh, I was the only minister in town that day, so it was my obligation to stay there. They wanted me to go to Halifax to respect an obligation. I said, no, I have to stay here. I knew it was a big thing, and uh, we handled that the best we could. But that led to the great movement of the people of Newfoundland, and particularly the people of Gander, received mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of people. And, uh, you know, I... He gave a great example of what it's all about to be a Canadian, and we were admired by everybody. And if you go to New York, there is the, the big play that is extremely popular that I went for the first show. And when I turned around, you know, the people were applauding and having tears in their eyes, appreciating the, the good way of uh, the people of uh, Gander and other places who welcome the desperate plane who could not land in the United States. So these are very important moments for me when I think about that period. Okay. And there is the other moment too, that during that day a plane was 
was communicating, was not communicating from Korea, was not communicating with anybody in the towers, and we were they were afraid that it could be an attack. And they said to me that perhaps the plane might be have to be shut down over the Canadian territory. And I said, get ready because I don't want that plane to land in the, in the, in Vancouver and uh, and cause a damage. But uh, the pilot of the plane took contact uh, with the towers, and the crisis was over. But I had to say, if they come, if they keep going towards Vancouver, shoot them down. But call me back before you do it. And they didn't have to call me back. Yeah, that that would have been an extremely difficult decision, but of course. But you know, when you know there is three hundred people in the plane, and you say we might have to shoot the plane down, it's. Uh, I don't want to have a day and a decision like that to be made. Uh, happily, you know, there was no need to shoot shut, shoot down the plane, but uh, I, I was obliged to do that if it was really dangerous for the city of Vancouver. Mr. Kutch, I know you're with family today. I will uh, leave you to them with our thanks. A pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. And have a good day. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.